I heard Billy Graham say years ago, maybe in the 50s, I was just a, a young girl. He said, good is getting better and bad is getting worse. That was back in the 50s. It's even more so now. Good is getting better and bad is getting worse. And we have more martyrdom in the church right now than ever before. I mean, I just heard the other day how many priests have been burned alive mm. in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, they're burning them alive. They're burning, there's more, there's more persecution coming. Cardinal Burke wrote a letter to the Americans years back saying Americans get rid of get ready for uh, martyrdom it's coming your way the Catholic Church will be very persecuted I think more than any other Christian church because it's a true church founded by Christ and so the martyrdoms will come are you gonna be ready the way to get ready is to have a good Lent right now mm -hmm. that's one way to get ready we don't know what's got God got in store for us those people in Turkey didn't know they were gonna be dying and it's a terrible thing what happened in Turkey. But when you think about it, 40,000 people died, over 40,000. But every day, over 200,000 babies are aborted. And people don't every think day? about it. Every day. That's according to the statistics we found in the computer. Every day, over 200,000 babies are aborted. So now that's not going to stop. The abortions are not going to stop unless we have all these natural catastrophes. Uh, the, the world and the church being persecuted and crucified. That's what's going to change and stop the abortion thing. Um, God is going to have to do it, and he's going to do it through his discipline and of his children, allowing all these things to happen so the world can become a better place in the mm -hmm. church. It'll be like never before. At the end of this persecution and chastisement, the world and the church will be like never before. So, you know, lift your head up, realizing these are good things that are happening. They're necessary. Not that not, Now, we can't say it's good to have a an earthquake and 40,000 people die. No. But, you know, we know that God is bringing a greater good of everything that happens to us. And, uh, you know, we don't know when we're going to die. Only God knows. My, my grandpa used to talk about, you know, used to say, they've been talking about the end of the world since I was a boy, but the world comes to an end every day for many people. You don't know when the world's going to come to an end for you. You don't have to worry about the future chastisement. You could die today, tomorrow. You don't know. Be ready. Be ready all the time. Live every day as if it's your last. They tell every priest to say every Mass as if it's his last Mass, his first and his last Mass. So live every day as if it's your first day and your last day. Forget about the past. Don't lament over your past sins. Live today as if it's your first day. And live today as if it's your last day. If this is the only day you have. You only have the present moment. I said before, I think on your program, Mother Angelica, you say the past is dead, the future is unborn, we only have the present moment. Live in the present moment. And you're going to, you and listen, if the, especially if you have a church near you, go to Mass if you can. There's nothing holding you back if you don't have to stay home for any particular reason. Spend that time with Him. One day the Mass might not be available. You know, they talk about uh, the church being crucified. I think it will be. It'll be the, the church, the Mass may be underground one day. You may have a hard time getting a Mass. Take the opportunity now to go to Mass. Uh, it's a great gift from God to receive Jesus, to ask for the faith, to really believe His real presence if you don't, you know. And there's many Eucharistic miracles. We have more many Euchar more Eucharistic miracles during this past century. Actually, since Vatican II, they've had more because um, with the Novus Ordo Mass, you know, we have had a lot of Eucharistic miracles because God's trying to bring his people to him. And Medjugorje, I mean, it used to be that apparitions, only a few apparitions, uh, Fatima, Lourdes, only a few apparitions. Uh, our Lord is sending his mother every day for years and years. He's a lot of Eucharistic miracles because he's trying to get us to believe. He's trying to get our faith to grow, you know, so he's given us all these great gifts, these great miracles, all kinds of things happening. And people still go away from him, you know. So uh, take the opportunity right now to go to confession. You've got a priest. Go to confession regularly if you can. Our Lady in Medjugorje said once a month. Uh, we go once a week. But you go go once a month at least. You know, Our Lady asked for that. She said, if you do what she's telling you to do in Medjugorje, you won't feel so much when the, when the chastisements come. You'll be okay. She says to read the scriptures 30 minutes a day. Go to Mass every day. Go to confession once a month. Um, it's go to adoration. That's the thing she's telling us to do. You do those things, you have nothing to worry about. You'll be okay. It'll be clear sailing for you. Because I think the worst part of the 
perse- the uh, the the um, great chastisement that's coming will be spiritual darkness, and those who are with God won't experience that spiritual darkness. They'll continue to have joy and peace, but spiritual darkness is worse than any physical chastisements. When there's you don't feel God anywhere and you feel total darkness, that's the worst suffering more than. Um, that's what Louisa was suffering when she couldn't see him. When she was, in the, she'd see him and she didn't see him, and she could feel the difference. The spiritual darkness when God's not there. You know, she thought she was going to die without him. She couldn't live without him. That's how much she loved him. Let's pray for that same grace to love him as Louisa loved him, to love him the way Our Lady loved him.